Let's talk about linear operator. What's a linear operator? A linear operator is one that obeys two conditions. Here's condition one and here's condition two. If I apply operator O on a sum of two functions, F and G, okay, then if it is a linear operator, and that should be equal to applying O on F and then applying O on G and just taking the sum. Now, don't confuse this with A plus B operating on F, which is AF plus AG. That's different. Ah, BG. This is different. Okay, this sum of two operators. This is the definition. This is always true. Okay? This one is always true. Sum of two operators will give you the sum of the results. But this is not always true. And the other condition that must be satisfied is this. If I have an operator operating on a function that is multiplied by a constant, so C here is a constant, I should get back, it should be equal to the same, it should give me the same result if I just took the operator on F, apply the operator on F and multiply it by the constant. In other words, I should be able to just pull that constant out of the operator. And again, this one is not always true. Okay, so if both of these conditions are satisfied, if, if both of these are true, then you say that the operator is a linear operator. In fact, you can combine this expression. Okay, in some textbooks, this is how the, a linear operator is going to be defined. Operator O is a linear operator if you operate it on C1, F1, plus C2, F2, okay? Or C1 and C2 are constants, F1 and F2 are functions. If that gives you back, okay, I can uh, distribute, right? Because that... that that would satisfy condition one, right? So that's O, C1, F1, plus O, o hat, C2, F2. That satisfies condition one. And if it satisfies condition two, what, what can I do? I can pull out my constant. So that gives me C1, O hat, F1, plus C2, O hat, F2. So this is another definition of a linear operator. Okay, this is a more compact way of defining the linear operator. You can either say if the operator, if this is true for the operator, it's a linear operator. Another way of saying it is it's linear if it satisfies these two conditions. Okay? Now, F and G, okay, the F and G that we have here can be any two, any arbitrary functions. It doesn't have to be very, if it works for one specific pair of functions, it doesn't mean it's true. It has to work for any pair of functions. So F and G must be arbitrary. So let's say we define operator A as follows. Same de definition we did earlier. A operating on function F gives you back the derivative of function F. Is A a linear operator? Now well, let's see. Uh, a hat operating on function F plus G. Is that equal to a hat operating on F plus a hat operating on G? Well, let's do it step by step. What's a hat operating on F plus G? That's derivative of F plus G with respect to X, right? That's the definition. A hat operating on anything will just take will just give you back the derivative of whatever it's operating on. In this case, it's operating on f plus g, so it has to give you the derivative of f plus g with respect to x. Okay, but what's the derivative of f plus g with respect to x? You know that that's equal to df dx plus dg dx. Right? You know that from math, from calculus. But what is d operating on f? That's just a f, right? That's a hat f. And what is d g d x? That is just a operating on g, right? So plus a g a hat g. So and that's that. So condition one is satisfied. Let's look at condition two. 
a hat operating on f plus g, I mean constant times f, is that equal to a constant times a hat operating on f? Again, we prove this step by step. Apply the definition first. What's the definition of operator A? Whatever A is operating on, you just take the derivative with respect to X, right? So derivative with respect to X of CF. Well, what do we know about derivative of a constant times a function? I can pull out my constant, right? Times derivative of F with respect to X. But what is df dx? So that's just c times a hat f, which is that. So the answer is yes. So conditions 1 and 2 are satisfied. So the derivative operator, a hat here, which takes the derivative of a function, is a linear operator. It satisfies both conditions. All right. Let's say we define operator b, same as before takes the square of whatever function it operates on. Is that a linear operator? Let's see. A hat, op uh, B hat, operating on function f plus g. Is that equal to B hat f plus B hat g? No? Okay. Let's see. What does B do to whatever it's operating on? It takes the square. So it takes the square of F plus G. But what's the square of F plus G? F squared plus 2FG plus G squared. Okay. And what do we know about F squared? F squared is just B hat F, right? And g squared is just b hat g. But there's an extra term here, that's 2fg. Oops. There's a 2fg in between, right? So that's equal to that, that's equal to that, but there's that 2 that's extra term here. And the only way this way this would be true is f and g are both zero, right? Or one of them is zero. So set condition one is not satisfied, right? So b is not a linear operator. You don't even have to test the second condition. But let's test it anyway. What's the second condition? b hat operating on cf. Is that the same thing as c times b operating on f? What does b do to the, op to the function? Square is it? Cf squared. And so that's equal to C squared F squared. And what is F squared? That's just B hat operating on function F. And when can this be true? If C is equal to C squared. In general, C is not equal to C squared. The only way this can be true is if C is 1 or ne negative 1 or 0. Yeah. So in general, then the answer is no. Right? So B is not a linear operator as we, as we have defined it here. Okay? So you know what a linear operator is. Uh, is C operating on function F gives you the complex conjugate of function F. Is that a linear operator? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer, and I'm asked, and you have to prove it to me in the homework. So I'll add that to your homework. Answer is no. All right. Let's look at some uh, types of operators you might encounter. A lot of operators you might encounter would be involved something that involves replacement. So replacement type operators, these are generally linear. Okay, so consider the parity operator, f of x, so pi hat here, the parity operator, operates on a function of x. And the rule here, when the way this is written says that anytime you see an x, replace it by negative x. Okay, 
So uh, let's just assume X is real. Okay. So it's a parity operator because X is coordinate. Okay. So it's a parity operator, a linear operator. Let's try it. Parity operator operating on f of x plus g of x. Is that the same as parity operator operating on f of x plus parity operator operating on g of x? Well, let's see. What's the left side equal to? Anytime I see an x, I replace it by negative x. So this is f of negative x plus g of negative x. Well, what is this? This is just pi hat f of x, right? And what is this one? Pi hat g of x, which is the same as that one, so the answer is yes. Right? What about a constant? Parity operator operating on a constant times f. Is that equal to a constant times parity operator operating on f of x? What would you do here? Anytime I see an x, I replace by. So this is c times f of x. But what is f of negative x? That's c times parity operator operating on f of x. And that's the same. So the answer is yes. So the parity operator is a linear operator. Okay. Uh, another type of operator you'll encounter is what's called a multiplicative operator. Is it time? Uh, okay, we'll continue this next time.